How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? WWE Movie Maker here to make another video. And this one is about Monday Night Raw, the review, the official results review for Monday Night Raw. What happened? And how did it play out? Well, I can tell you this right now Monday Night Raw is better than it was. And when I mean better than it was, I mean better than it was a few weeks ago. Better than it was. Two to three weeks ago. Last week, the show was good. This week, the show was, again, another good show. Was it absolutely spectacular? No. Everything that happened throughout the show was not spectacular. It made for a decent show. It made for a decent television both weeks. But it seems like Raw has been picking up. And it just makes sense that they pick up near WrestleMania. Also got news on Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels actually returned last night on Raw. But he talks about why him... Facing AJ Styles would not be a better match than him facing Samoa Joe. We also got other news from Monday Night Raw last night. Uh, we also got Dean Ambrose talking a potential match with Baron Corbin at WrestleMania. And we also have uh, Corey Graves, who actually says he's not a fan of Shane McMahon uh, versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania. The Bring It to the Table show, episode 2 aired yesterday right after Raw on the WWE Network. We'll review that. And a lot of the new stories that I talk about are from that. Sasha Banks opens up on why she didn't go, go public with her marriage until now. And uh, it's pretty simple. I don't, really, I don't really need to review anything about that. She pretty much just says that the WWE fans are crazy. Let's get right into it. The Raw Review, right here, right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, WWE Movie Maker here with your official Raw review. And before I even get underway with Raw and everything that happened, I just want to say that, uh, you know, WWE television, if you talk about Raw and SmackDown both together, I have to say that there's a lot of things as a whole, I think that WWE is doing better than it has been. I mean, if you look at the past two years for WrestleMania and during WrestleMania season, how bad has the booking been? You know, we didn't even have a brand split. And, it, and you know, you, you could only look forward to things that would happen on Raw. Um, you could only look forward to storylines that were pretty much showcased on Raw. And those are the main storylines. And now we get, you know, a brand split where there are storylines on both brands and main event matches on both brands and even better mid-card matches on both brands that we can both care about i mean the booking for wrestlemania the booking in general has come a long way certainly there are things that are, need to be worked on hum, you know like humongously um but there are as a whole they have been working decently they have been working you know to the best of their ability in order to make the show watchable um in terms of the pg rating in terms of uh, the talent they have, although I think the talent itself could be working even harder, um, and that unfortunately is because well, why they're not working as hard as you know they could be even more. It's because of the of what WWE has been telling them, obviously, to keep everything on a low side and not to uh, go over the uh, the line. Uh, but during WrestleMania season is always the best time to watch wrestling, uh, even if it's bad, it's still good. Uh, if not great, it's still okay. And, you know, this year, watching Raw last night, I didn't feel like it was absolutely tremendous, but it certainly felt like WrestleMania is here. It's approaching. Uh, we should get ready. Uh, you know, you should feel excited. Uh, I'm feeling excited. I don't know about a lot of other people, but I'm honestly excited for this show um, at WrestleMania. I don't even care about how bad the booking is nowadays. Um, they've certainly spiked up during WrestleMania. They've certainly spiked up throughout the brand split. There have been times where they've been so low that really you think that they cannot go any farther. But there are also times like last night and even last week with both Raw and SmackDown, they can potentially put on one of the biggest shows of the year. Even I don't even know if the decade maybe. But in terms of Raw last night, um, 
it wasn't better than last week's. Uh, but this week they did a decent job. There were two major components of Raw that I thought, you know, that I thought were amazing, that I graded an A, that I graded, you know, a, a nine, eight, nine out of ten for sure. Um, and I will talk to you about that. Um, but in terms of again, you know, being you know being a wrestling fan in WrestleMania season and Raw and SmackDown. I think for WrestleMania at this point, they're doing way better than they have before. I mean, and if you think they're not, their booking isn't as great, just look at the guys that are going to be on, on, on WrestleMania. You have people like AJ Styles. They're going to be in a main event match now. A huge big time. I don't want to keep, I don't want to say main event. I'll say big match. He's facing Shane McMahon. That's not, that's not a short deal, ladies and gentlemen. Shane, Ma Shane McMahon is not a small deal. He's a big deal. AJ Styles, Bray Wyatt is in the WWE title picture. Who could have ever th imagined that? Ever. You have Samoa Joe, who most likely I don't know about this now. This is this is this is sort of um, uh, been on my mind that I don't really know what to say about it. But I think Samoa Joe is not wrestling a match at WrestleMania. Um, it's way too far now. Uh, you had the opportunity last night to debut or return have Finn Balor return, um, but he did not return. Actually, Finn Balor tweeted out on Twitter. A picture of him holding a remote, two remote controls, asking, tweeting out, saying, "What channel is Raw on?" So pretty much, he just told us that man, he's not in the uh, arena, he's not in the uh, in Detroit, Michigan, and your guys are just gonna have to uh, deal with it. This almost confirms that Finn Balor is not at WrestleMania. He is going to be there the Raw after. This is this almost you know certainties it because why would you not want to have Balor on the Raw after WrestleMania now? Spike ratings. You know, amazing surprise. It'll give the Raw after WrestleMania a good boost that it needs. And people will watch for some sort of reason. Because, well, Finn Balor's here. You know, to make it feel like WrestleMania weekend. So Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, I don't know about Samoa Joe being at WrestleMania. Most likely, I think he'll have some sort of appearance at least. Um, you know, Seth Rollins will be wrestling at WrestleMania finally. Right? You have so many guys that are going to be... And he's, in a, he's, a, he's against Triple H. You have so many guys... Roman Reigns, the Undertaker now, right? Roman Reigns last year was in the main title picture. Two years ago, he was in the main title picture. Now, he's not in the main title picture. He's a little bit below that. So, for some people, that's great. But to be honest, Roman Reigns, the Undertaker, I'm looking forward to this match. I really am. Um, there are so many reasons why you should care about it. Number one is because Undertaker does not work as fast as he you know, still used to. But he works better than a, every other part-timer, which means he still can go which means he can still put on solid matches. I told you, watch Shane McMahon Undertaker. Shane McMahon is not even a full-time wrestler. Shane McMahon is not a guy like Rollins or Reigns or Ambrose or, or Styles. He's, he's not close to a Styles. But that match, that match was better than half the matches on WrestleMania. And trust me, there were like 10 matches that night. He beat like almost all of them. You know, um... And then you and then you'd have to talk about Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns right now, he's no he's he's a he's a young guy, thirty years of age, and he has been improving his game and he this guy can wrestle. He can wrestle good matches and he's in the peak of his almost around the peak of his career. And soon he will, once he turns heel, hopefully. But at this point he's he's reaching the peak. He's a full time wrestler. I mean, if Undertaker can can put on a decent match with Shane McMahon, this is a show stealer. Roman Reigns. I understand there's a negative vibe when you say Roman Reigns, but think about it. Roman Reigns, what good has he done? His matches have been solid. They have been amazing. Look at look at Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. You know, I'm going to disagree with this because on Bring It, uh, Bring it to the Table last night, apparently Peter Rosenberg said that this is a possible WrestleMania main event. It felt like it. No, no, I got to disagree with that. It's not that great. It's not that great. Certainly, I would have liked to see it at WrestleMania, but that match was a great match. It just displays to you. I mean, look at the matches he had with AJ Styles. Okay, obviously Styles is sort of the one that put over Reigns, but Reigns is not a bad worker. Have you not heard the good stories about Reigns? Styles has said it. Finn Balor has said it. The fan favorites, the internet darlings, have said it that they feel comfortable working with Roman Reigns. Right. You may think, well, Roman Reigns versus somebody is not—it's it's, not—it's not because of Roman Reigns that the match is good. It's because of the other guy. Well, to to make a match successful, both guys have to have uh, a good work ethic. Both guys have to have uh, the passion, the will to make this match—you know—appear and look good to the audience. So if that's not the case, 
you would have clearly seen it that the match would drag, you know. And a lot of Roman Reigns matches have not dragged. People have been saying, man, I fell asleep during Triple H and Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania 32. Well, think about it. Do you think Triple H and Roman Reigns, um, they, they, they don't move fast. They're big, muscular guys. They're going to wrestle a ground game. They're going to wrestle, you know, and they're going to they're gonna use submissions, right? They're going to use slow-paced tactics. If you're a professional wrestling fan, you would have enjoyed that match. But if you think that since that was boring to you, there are different paces in the WWE. Not everybody wrestles a fast-paced match. It was a slow, methodical, calculated match that led to a climax. I don't think it was bad. Certainly, it was late at night and I wanted to go to sleep, but it wasn't because of the match that I wanted to go to sleep. It was sort of because of the outcome. I knew that this was going to happen. I knew that Roman Reigns was going to win. I knew that everything was coming full circle. But I didn't fell asleep because of the match. It was a good match. Roman Reigns matches are not bad. They are not bad. The guy is coming along well. He looks great. His character is the one that needs work. And unfortunately, character you know, uh, development in the WWE is the most important thing of them all. It doesn't even matter if you know how to throw a punch. Your character must be great. Says Vince McMahon. That's true. And Reigns is not connecting with the stars or the, or the, uh, the fans. And whether you want to say it or not, his wrestling outdoes his character. And you might be like, well, obviously... His character's horrible. Obviously, he'd at least he'd be good at wrestling. No, no. His wrestling surpasses his character big time. Right? So, you got to give him some credit with wrestling. Um, but I just want to say, you know, I went off with a freaking long-ass rant there. Um, but my point here is, is that Raw and SmackDown have been putting on decent shows um, recently for WrestleMania. And, you know, a lot of the things that I care about are, you know making like a lot of things i don't care about i start to care about now and that's because of the way wwe's been booking a lot of things i mean um i mean i mean with the cena miz nikki bell and maurice thing i may not be fully invested in the match but i love the build-up right obviously i still i still think the match is not it is horrible but the build-up is going to be great i know it and that's what wwe needs to prove you know last year their build-up was horrible and their matches were just as bad this year at least their build-up is decent and their matches well looks like that should be okay so if everything seems out to be decent you're gonna have a good wrestlemania and that's all you can ask for right now speaking of decent wrestlemania how decent was raw let's get right into the raw review brock lesnar releases his attack on bill goldberg so it kicked off with a promo with paul Heyman and brock lesnar um Simply, Heyman was excellent here. He provided the foundation of the Goldberg-Lesnar story, and he sold it uh, without a single word from his client. Uh, the advocate did well to sell the Lesnar's you know, added confidence. He pretty much said that you know Bill Goldberg is going down while Lesnar is going up. Uh, that was the main theme about it. There's always a main theme to a Paul Heyman promo. That's why it makes it so significant. Um, he doesn't carry on from what happened previous. He creates new themed promos every time he goes out there there's always that one word that um defines his promos every time he goes out there this time it was goldberg going down lesnar going up that was a theme there's always a certain theme about uh, hyman's promos which make it more interesting and fresh every time he goes out there uh this wasn't exactly newsworthy though but there were no major developments with the feud and zero physicality um it was just another way or something to remind the fans it was another way to hype up the match uh obviously goldberg wasn't going to be here you don't want any physicality before wrestlemania you don't want bill goldberg bill goldberg being injured before wrestlemania so they had a promo being cut where you know they would just seemingly uh announce that uh you know brock lesnar is uh you know coming for Goldberg and he's going for Goldberg's title uh it was just another way to remind the fans and you know another way to open raw and you know I would have I would have opened the raw with actually the tag team titles and the number one contendership match why it's because I think I would have opened raw with some wrestling at least some actual decent wrestling and um I would have had Brock Lesnar you know and Paul Heyman actually open the first hour um you know but whatever the case is um you know, it was a good way to kick off Raw because obviously you need some sort of momentum going into Raw. You don't want uh, 
you know, boring Roman Reigns promos all the time with Stephanie McMahon and uh, Mick Foley, which I'll get to as well. Um, but it was a good way to kick it off. Uh, I think the match itself, again, Goldberg and Lesnar, this is a type of a feud where you can hype it up as much as you want. But at the end of the day, you know the match, it's not going more than like, f- man, it's not going more than 10 minutes. Not even, not even maybe five to 10 minutes. Um, because for the past six to seven months, or I think it's less than that, five months, I think, Goldberg has not taken a bump, right? And just recently, last week, he took an F5. And I seen the you know him trying to get up. He was literally in shock. It looked like he was like freaking, uh, you know, run over by a truck or whatever, a car or something. He just fell, and he's like slowly staggering. You know, his whole body's shaking. And it, 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 it seemed like he was in, in shock. And if that's the case... We're putting him in again. Oh man! We're putting him in the ring with Brock Lesnar against him at WrestleMania. It doesn't seem well for him. Um, you have to. You have to understand that Goldberg is going to be taking suplexes. I mean, how can you not? You know, how can how can Goldberg walk out of WrestleMania with the title on his shoulder again? Because that is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to obviously you know make it unpredictable, right? Because we all think that Lesnar is going to beat Goldberg and get one up on him. But here's the thing. Number two, if this happens, it 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 makes sense to a certain extent. Because if Brock Lesnar were to beat Goldberg, he's, he's two and one against Goldberg. Okay, two and one. He lost to Goldberg at WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania 20, I believe. And he lost to Goldberg at Survivor Series 2016. So if he beats Goldberg at WrestleMania 33, he's just two up, two, two, you know, two up one. He's he's up one against Goldberg, or you know, up one at least from zero. It's two to one. So Goldberg still has the advantage. So this by no means is a rubber match. It it may seem like it may seem like a rubber match, but really there in the WWE rubber matches are more. Uh, balanced on either side this time it's not really so if Goldberg wins I'm gonna say right now I don't whoever wins in this case it's gonna it's not gonna be shocking because if Goldberg wins here's the thing so it almost confirms that the guy is gonna be staying here after Wrestlemania it almost confirms that Lesnar is now fully buried and I think you know WWE doesn't want to do that. They want to make sure Lesnar reestablishes himself because him and Le- uh, Goldberg are two of the biggest draws on Raw. Let alone, I mean, even in the WWE, you know, let alone Raw. Um, they need to capitalize on that. So it does not matter how good you book this feud. Either way, the outcome is predictable. Is that bad? No, not always. Um, but it would be very, very interesting at this point of the, uh, of, of the game to have something unpredictable happen with the main event. Because right now, the main event with Lesnar and Goldberg is not looking promising. If there's some sort of twist, which I hope and I think WWE might be doing, I don't know what it is, it would be interesting. It would. Um, but that's just my opinion on that. Then you, then we get into you know some women's action. Uh, we had Sasha Banks and Dana Brooke. Um, this... Uh, you know, from the moment it began to the moment it ended, it was this very rushed, scripted uh, segment. Very v- heavily rushed is what I want to say. Um, it was rated a B minus. Um, Sasha Banks easily uh, beat Dana Brooke. I looked down on my phone and I looked back up and I seen Sasha Banks roll the tights and I heard the bell ring. Um, it was a smart move uh, that sets Dana Brooke free. Oh, yeah. Um, Sa- uh, Charlotte turned on Dana Brooke. So now we get to see Dana Brooke back in a face position and it worked because the the fans were chanting i think i don't know what they, what are they chanting thank you dana or, or dana brooke or some shit like that they were on her face they were, they were they were on her side and with her favor so um dana brooke is now face people were saying that now she can finally you know dana brooke is now face and she doesn't have to be with charlotte anymore she can you know be her own uh boss uh and maybe even pair up with emma who is supposed to be returning as the Emma uh, that she originally was supposed to be, uh, and not turn to Emmalina. I- I'm going to get to that as well. That that was pretty bullshit. Like, why the why the hell do you have Emmalina uh, and Emma uh, go from Emmalina to transfer to Emma and then have the vignettes and patches again? Why don't you just uh, you know why don't you just have Emma debut as Emma instead of freaking Emmalina going to Emma and then having the video packages play for Emma 
You know, like we already know Emma's here. Like, why does she have to leave again? You know, it makes no sense. So anyways, that's my prediction. Um, Dana Brooke and Emma would be a very, very good uh, pairing as they were in NXT. Uh, this split, though, could have been so much bigger had Brooke not been absent so much over the past months. If she had stayed with Charlotte, it would have seemed a little bit more interesting and intriguing. But since she just recently came back out of nowhere, uh, that's another thing to consider. You know, there has been a giant hole in the narrative, one that hurt uh, the impact of this moment. Although it is a very good thing that now this finally happened. Now we get to see Dana Brooke in some sort of, you know, uh, singles run as herself, by herself, maybe with uh, Emma. And this, you know, hopefully, in in the long run, uh, bodes well for the Raw Women's Division, which, you know, they, they need help. Um, then you had the uh, Cruiserweights. Cruiserweights are now getting more time on Raw. And I have a feeling they're getting more time because of the match we saw last week. The Neville versus Rich Swan Cruiserweight Championship match, which stole the show on Raw. When, when did I ever say that? You know, like, they stole the show on Raw... Uh, and it seems like WWE may have noticed it. Um, they put on a good 15-20 minute match on Raw, and it was the best match of the night. The best match on Fastlane as well with uh, Neville and Jack Gallagher for the Cruiserweight Championship. So it seems like now they're getting more time. Maybe Vince is investing more time, and they need more time, especially because they don't want to drag out these WrestleMania stories. right? They want to keep these WrestleMania stories consistent, so let's use the Cruiserweights to kill some time so we don't overexpose our stories. They should have been doing this since last year. Um, but at least at least they figured out um, the issue and the problem. Yeah, Tony Nese, Brian Kendrick versus Akira Tozawa and TJ Perkins. So this was a C. Um, this went on for about 10 to 15 minutes, though. Even with the talent involved here, it felt like a filler. Uh, the Tozawa Kendrick feud has crawled along and only t took a few baby steps with their interactions here. Uh, Perkins and Nice uh, have little going on. Uh, these short, hurried bouts don't do anything for these men, um, or don't do any don't do, do these men much good. Uh, they have been the anchor uh, holding back the cruiserweight division. Although at least this is something better that we've seen before. Maybe they can slowly capitalize and uh, you know increase. Uh, the time on, on, on Raw a little bit later. Uh, tonight, we're actually seeing a Fatal 5-Way, and Austin Aries is in it. Austin Aries is probably the best thing about to Cruiserweight. Cruiserweight right now, the only main things about it is, the Nev is Neville and uh, Austin Aries. There's a Fatal 5-Way match tonight to determine the number one contender. So, you know, they sold that on Raw good enough to see, you know, to have some views uh, for the WWE Network tonight on 205 Live. Um, and I think without Austin Aries... Being part of the cruiserweight division at this point, it would have been dead because I don't know what else uh, would have, you know, made people invested. Um, thanks to the crowd last week, this week, and hopefully next week in the Barclays Center, you know, a lot of people have, you know, have uh, been getting the cheers, and you know, it's just a lot of the reason is because of the crowd, and you know, Vince may be convinced that a lot of people in the crowd who like these guys who are getting cheered. Let's give them some more time, right? So sometimes with the crowd, it affects the superstar's um, performance. It also affects their status in the WWE if the fans even like them. So it's unfortunate when you have to go to a place like Corpus Christi, Texas anyways, or, or freaking Green Bay. Um, you know what I'm saying. Then you had a, a, a uh, an amazing moment with Kevin Owens in the spotlight. A-, minus. you know, the way you do the... Uh, the spotlight on Kevin Owens is a great way for him cutting promos. It's a great way for him uh, to be presented. Uh, he is where the spotlight should be. It is on him, and it should always be on him. The cold, measured version of Owens is a welcome sight. You know, the former Universal Champion engaged from moment uh, one as he laid out his issues with Chris Jericho. His motivations are logical, and he believes his misdeeds are justified. That's normally true of the best villains. Kevin Owens' rant helped round out the narrative, offering the audience insight onto uh, or into his dark mind. Then, from there, we went on to Chris Jericho, Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, and Kevin Owens. So this was a quick tag match. Um, it was a B plus. The match was too brief to engage the crowd fully, but the post brawl was a strong showcase for both Owens and Joe. Owens and Joe looked strong throughout the whole segment. Their purpose was just to stay after and you know beat the crap. They they they, they uh, simply got um uh, I believe uh, disqualified, uh, 
And because they were double teaming, I believe, Sami Zayn. They beat the crap out of Sami Zayn, beat the crap out of Chris Jericho, laid them both there, and, you know, uh, just walked out. And they both looked dominant. And that is what you're trying to do with your heels now, to have them look dominant and have some steam going into WrestleMania. You know, every week there's a certain... Uh, there's a certain person or, you know, the heel gets up one week, the face gets up one week. It's a balance between both of them so that they're both significantly uh, recognized when WrestleMania comes around. And hopefully um, this the same thing happens with uh, Owens and Joe, which at this point, it seems like they are um, going with it. Uh, WWE waited, you know, until Owens lost the title to start booking him like a beast for some reason, but better later than never. Um, he and Joe are tremendous as a, you know, take no prisoner, prisoners duo, and they'll continue the alliance, hopefully, as they have great chemistry, and, um, you know, they are a natural fit together. Cesaro, Sheamus, Enzo, Moore, and Big Cass. So this was, you know, around the midway of the show, I guess, number one contenders uh, match. Um, and this was rated a D plus. Uh, this was very, very predictable. Um, they could have made this match more than it was. They could have made it more important than it was, but they decided not to. Um, and they just had Gallows and Anderson interrupt and, you know, cost the, uh, the, 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 the potential for either one of these teams to face off. And we already knew that a triple threat was going to happen, but, uh, they could have done it some other way. I mean, you know, look at SmackDown, right? Just think about it. You had the main event between Orton and Wyatt, and they needed something to build throughout the seven weeks. So they had Orton, you know, relinquish his ch his shot at the championship. or And they had like three weeks of build between Styles, Orton, Styles, Wyatt, Styles, Harper, right? They did a good job of it, and now they're culminating to WrestleMania here on Raw. It's like they're rushing through one story to get it all through uh, one night, you know? They could have done something with the tag division, um, but they just threw this together. And because of the lazy booking, um, just let do a three-way match at WrestleMania. Now we have Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus Shame Cesaro versus Enzo Moore, Big Cass. That is your triple threat match for the tag team titles at WrestleMania. Um, the tag team titles probably for both brands are going to be defended on the pre-show. Um, I can see that happening totally. Um you don't have to take the pre-show as a bad thing because you're still on WrestleMania. Uh, obviously, there's not enough time to fill everybody in WrestleMania, so that's why they're probably going to do that. Um, the concept of the bout is fine, but the route there was predictable. I mean, why would you have Gallows and Anderson interrupt the match anyway? Obviously, the reason was now you said whoever won this was the number one contender, so we made sure that there were no winners. That's what their point was and their argument was. Uh, they have now assured themselves two sets of opponents at WrestleMania. I mean, if you think about the logical reason behind this, you'll be like, well, Gals and Anderson, you're freaking retards because why would you do that? You obviously know if, he, if you're in the position of Mick Foley, who's a face general manager, it's easily going to put you against those two teams, right? Because you started the problem. So technically, you should have just allowed one team to win so you'd only have one team to uh, face off and worry about a WrestleMania. But I guess WWE doesn't use that doesn't use that logic. They use uh, some other type of logic that uh, still has yet to be determined. Now, Big Cass's promos force topical uh, elements into them, um, leading to cringeworthy moments. <laughs> Charisma can only sometimes overcome bad writing. Um, the match had some flashes of excitement, uh, thanks to high impact offense. So there's hope the WrestleMania match will be entertaining. Um, to be honest, the tag team division, the only tag team matches... I, I have not seen a lot of development with the Usos and American Alpha. Um, I think it's just me, but I, I haven't really seen... I'm going to have to watch SmackDown last from last week. I don't know if they did a promo or some sort of segment with those two teams last week. But it seems like in the past few weeks, I haven't seen much development. But the, since, the, since the Usos cut that you know amazing promo, uh, that, that gang-type promo on... <laughs> I don't know what else to say... On, on SmackDown a couple weeks ago, I was solely invested in that match. I want to see more of the Usos in American Alpha for SmackDown. But in terms of Raw, it's like they're putting teams together because, well, because WrestleMania. Let's just put all these guys together. Um, I think the match will be great. Um, and that's the up that WWE has because they really do have the best performers in the world. Um, they're not known as World Wrestling Entertainment for 
just that. It's it's for a reason. But you know, their their storylines. When when I say a lot of their builds are good, but some of them aren't. This is one of them that aren't. You know, the the the, the women's division and along with the tag team division are WWE's lowest priority at this point. Um, and they, it shouldn't be. You know, um, I don't know why you would say that it's difficult to have everything on your show a priority if you've made it a priority in the past and it's worked. You can't say that you have so many things to worry about at WrestleMania that you can't focus some time on the tag team division, right? Because you've done it before. It's worked out before. The tag team division was the hottest thing at WrestleMania 17. I mean, look at that. That And, and there was three teams that headlined, you know, like like three, two, three years of programming and nobody got bored of it. Nobody. Right? People are people now hate Enzo More. What have you done? Come on. What WWE, what have you done? You know, that's what I'm talking about. You can book, you know, feuds to be great and make sure that they're not dragged out. There's just a way, a formula to do it, and WWE has that formula. They're not using it though. And then this was the, probably the biggest thing that I gave a shit about Roman Reigns. Um I give a shit about Roman Reigns because it's it's intriguing to me it's leading to the edge of a heel turn it's leading to something interesting and mostly because he's facing the undertaker anybody who's facing the undertaker it's a big deal and that spotlight is now on roman reigns and maybe this is the spotlight he needs in order to make that adjustment to his career which is the heel turn which we don't know is going to if it's going to happen uh throughout the programming so the next two weeks take this in let me just confirm this um I believe there's only two Raws left for, for WrestleMania. They, yeah, there are two Raws, the 20th and the 27th. Next week is the second last Raw. It's in Barclays Center. And the last week, uh, which I don't have no idea where that is. But, man, two weeks left of Raw. You damn right that they're going to put on some sort of big, spectacular moment next week and the week following. WrestleMania build has slowly gotten there. Does it feel like WrestleMania season... Not quite. Somewhat, yes. And there are times where I think about it and I'm like, wait, we're watching WrestleMania season Raw. You know, we're watching WrestleMania Raws right now. You know, it's almost close, it's almost time, you know. And uh, there are feuds like this that I'm intrigued about. So you got Roman Reigns. Um, and he faced Jinder Mahal. This, you know, the, the match itself, it was an odd match into a dramatic, unexpected moment. A-. minus. First, I gotta, I gotta clear this, man. Jinder Mahal... It's actually quite frightening now. The guy, it, like wherever he goes, I, I'm comparing him to other people. His veins are popping out like uh, motherfuckers, man. What the hell? This guy has veins popping out his chest, his arms. The uh, that's frightening. Um, certainly, you wouldn't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they. Uh, it's easy. It's pretty much simple that they wouldn't have the guy wrestle if the guy was on some sort of drug hormone easy so why is it like this i don't know the guy is indian he's from india right i guess the blood like you know like, like their blood type they're more um you know they're more you know uh with the they adapt to more heated climates is what i'm trying to say so they might seem like their veins are popping, but it's just normal. I don't really know how to point it properly. I'm comp trying to compare it to the great Kali, who is also Indian and from India. A lot of the guys from India have these types of huge muscles and their veins are popping out and stuff. I don't know if that's from the climate they've adapted to. If their body is just that type of form, right? But it's really frightening. I mean, look at Roman Reigns. You, you would think Roman Reigns. Look at uh, um, his body. And even though he wears a vest, you look at his muscles and shit. He doesn't have any veins popping out of there, man. It's totally normal. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be considerate here. Now you know, uh, Jinder Mahal is not any normal guy. He's not, he's not like everybody else. He's a little bit different. But uh, in terms of his body type and everything, it's frightening. Uh, the guy, <laughs> when I see that, I'm like, holy shit, man. Uh, sometimes I do think like that they, they, they let him, you know, take the drug test and he failed, and they, they were like, it's okay, you know, or did they, did, did they not even test him at all? People have been saying that a lot, but obviously they had they had to have tested him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here right now. So this was an A-, minus Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal. Not the match, but the, the segment, which occurred after it. Shawn Michaels made a return. This was, I popped for this. I was like, what the hell? 
you know, when you make sure that you don't have surprises that are ruined, it feels great. I'm pretty sure Shawn Michaels hit in a truck all day. Nobody noticed him, and there you go. Um, Shawn Michaels, as the voice of reason in Roman Reigns' ear, was a smart idea and a fresh combination of personalities. Absolutely tremendous what they did here. People are... I don't, I don't understand some people. Why the fuck are people saying that Shawn Michaels returning... Sorry, I just have to adjust my headphones. But uh, Shawn Michaels returning a, every single year to tell the opponent about Undertaker. You think, you say that it's repetitive and it's boring. Well, I don't, I don't think it's boring. I think it's logical and it makes sense. Why? It's because Shawn Michaels arguably had the best matches with The Undertaker ever at WrestleMania. Nobody beat him. No, Triple H is probably, you know, the next person you'd call. But Michaels, well, I mean, he was the guy that, you know, got his career ended by The Undertaker. So why wouldn't it make sense? Shawn Michaels has been through one hellacious battle, wants another, you know, shot, and gets retired. You know, he's been through hell and high water with The Undertaker and was retired because of it. So he knows the in and outs of it. Shawn Michaels came off as a as a as a veteran who is the voice of reason. Tremendous way. Because Roman Reigns, what he did is he had displayed a cocky, arrogant guy and sort of disrespected Shawn Michaels in a way. Which is how you need to be booking him. That this is step one in the heel turn of Roman Reigns 2017. Yes, it is. This was a great way. Of portraying Roman Reigns, and then he got you know destroyed by Braun Strowman. I I thought the I thought the uh, you know the segments the the one you know by another you know Rusev facing Jinder Mahal, Shawn Michaels coming out getting you know then destroyed by Braun Strowman. I thought the sequence of segments was presented perfectly. R Roman Reigns' proclamation that you know uh, proclamation that he will end Undertaker's career. Yeah, oh my God, I remember this. This got him heat, bro. Heat big time. You know, he said that Undertaker was the one to enter your career, Shawn Michaels, but I'm going to end his. So this almost tells you that a career retirement match is possible. Career versus, you know, whatever. Uh, the, the streak isn't here anymore, but I, I mean, you know, the career match for Undertaker. This is leading to the biggest, the, the, the biggest heat Roman Reigns is ever going to get. You thought the Royal Rumble, when he came out there, was heat. He wasn't even intentionally trying to piss anybody off. Now, he's pissing people off. Man, if I don't see, like, freaking fire lit in Camping World Stadium, I don't, I don't know, man. I'll probably go there and lit fire myself. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to, there are going to be riots. And that is what you want. His character needs to keep heading in this direction, embracing the hate of the audience that, you know, uh, the audience has for him. The audience hates him. He doesn't give a shit. That's what he portrays. So great. This was this is one out of the two great segments I loved on the show. Roman Reigns and Undertaker. Looking forward to that match. Austin Aries versus Arya Devari. So this is the next Cruiserweight uh, match. It was a B minus. I'm just looking through like you know each of the matches. Man, the matches are all rated A to B. You know, like like there there are no like like the the grades for a lot of these segments are better than before you know better than a lot of the previous raws it just goes to show you that people are res responding and they're saying that raw is starting to get better and it's good because of wrestlemania and hopefully wwe can continue this i haven't really checked the ratings recently but i will check the ratings this week to see and, and also check I'll also check the ratings from last week to see how wwe has been doing with their daily television programs but anyways you have the cruiserweight match which was a b minus uh, again, Austin Aries is now being, this was his, his debut. He's, he's being portrayed on Raw now, um, and he's being displayed, and he's going to be the next contender for the Cruiserweight uh, Championship. Um, so, you know, bringing him uh, the way he did, bringing him out as Austin Aries the way you did last week um, is what is going to create intrigue because everything, there, there is so, you know, it is very, very, uh, you know, not always is the audience going to go behind a, a superstar like Austin Aries, like they did last week. And, you know, um, 
quite co- coincidentally, Austin Aries just attacks Neville. You know, a lot of the times people aren't expecting these things, and people, if you don't have, if you don't hear people cheering for the guy, obviously he's not over with them, and they don't want to see him do much. But you know, with Austin Aries, it was the right time, and it's a great way to promote the cruiserweight division. Neville versus Austin Aries, I believe um, Austin Aries will win the championship at WrestleMania. By the way, um, that's just a future prediction, but. We'll see how things change throughout WrestleMania season. Uh, a mostly one-sided uh, win offered a solid introduction for a debuting Austin Aries. He hit hard and took some hard hits. Uh, he came off as a viable threat to Neville as well. Cora Graves did an excellent job of listing Austin Aries' accomplishments to round out the former TNA's star's first match on Raw. It's clear WWE is pushing toward an Austin uh, Aries and Neville WrestleMania feud showdown. Uh, and that's absolutely the right move. I'm telling you, it's a way to promote the cruiserweight division. If, as fun as Jack Gallagher and Tozawa are, Austin Aries and Neville will tear down the house representing the cruiserweight division. Again, you have show-stealing matches at WrestleMania. And you have to take your division seriously. And this guy will make it serious. Austin Aries is known as the greatest man who ever lived. Well, if he's great, can you win the cruiserweight divi- uh, uh, the title? I was going to say cruiserweight division. What the hell is wrong with me? If Austin Aries can win the Cruiserweight title, he solidifies the greatest man that ever lived, and he is that. So, you know, it's a great story that they're going to be telling here at WrestleMania. Um, I do hope that, I really, really hope, um, and I, I I know this is, I, like, it's almost certain that this won't happen because there are other matches that are occupying uh, the pre-show, but I don't think this match should be on the pre-show. Austin Aries and Neville, um, it, like, it almost seems... As if this match will be on the cruiserweight or on. God damn it. it it's going to be on the pre-show. Um, only because in the eyes of backstage management, it may not seem like a, a viable WrestleMania, uh, you know, like a, like a WrestleMania match. Even though, you know, even, even though not every match is a main event match, but even to be on the WrestleMania card, right? I mean, the tag team matches, you know, how many times have we seen an actual tag team match for the tag team titles on the actual WrestleMania show. For the fucking four or five years. Past four or five years. They've all been on the pre-show. And this year is no different. Just because. And number you know number two. Because well. Look at the matches you have at WrestleMania. There's like ten matches that you're supposed to have. You can't fill them. I've, I've said this before. You can't fill them all in. in, in, in uh, four hours. Four and a half hours. You know. Um, so unfortunately. It seems like the Cruiserweight division. The match between Neville and uh, Austin Aries is going to be kicking off the pre-show. Unfortunately, that's not. I mean, you have two hours of pre-show. I mean, what do you expect? You know, what do you expect? Um, if it was me, what I would have done is I would have had Neville and Austin Aries kick off WrestleMania. I would have them kick off WrestleMania with an outstelling, like out, a stellar fifteen-minute, fifteen-minute showdown. I would have done that. Certainly, the reason they're not going to do that is because in the eyes of the casuals, the cruiserweight division isn't over. What do you think the people or the or the or the, or the you know the talent in the division is? If the if the division itself isn't even well known yet, then the talent is nothing. So that in the eyes of the, of WWE, they may not do that. And so that's like literally three matches in the pre-show, the SmackDown and Raw tag team titles, along with the cruiserweight division title. Those three matches are on on the pre-show, and uh, you know it seems like I, I, pretty much that's your pre-show. Um, you might want to include Honor the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, um, unless you want to, unless if you want to, you know, put that as a filler before the main event, which they did last year. Um, they could do that. Um, I would, I would, I don't know. I'd put that on the pre-show as well. Um, it better suits the pre-show. Um, no disrespect to Honor the Giant. No disrespect to anybody. Of the of the past, but that match, the concept of it, it's not WrestleMania worthy. Um, it's just a battle royal, right? The trophy does nothing to anybody. The trophy, it's a, it's a great looking trophy though. It does nothing for anybody. So I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not saying the honor of the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is better than the Cruiserweight Title match, but they both, you know seem to resemble a uh, you know a 
not a very high WrestleMania vibe. And so that's why they wouldn't be a fan, like a favorite for management to put on um, the WrestleMania card. So unfortunately, we may as well be seeing Neville and Austin Aries as the pre-show. But they'll they'll still kill it either way. It does not matter. Um, then you had Big Show versus Titus O'Neil. So throughout the show, this is useless, by the way. Throughout the show, they had a freaking Jetsons promotion for the WWE, uh, and it was a freaking movie, The Jetsons, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I put I, put, I posted a tweet on Twitter. I was like, "So are you going to be buying The Jetsons on DVD tomorrow?" And this was yesterday night. I said first it was tweet one. Um, the first option was yes, for sure. And the second one was fuck the Jetsons and fuck WWE. Well, obviously the over majority of fans voted fuck the Jetsons and fuck WWE. I wasn't even getting many, many, many responses on Twitter. Uh, it was looking like a lot of people were actually not tuning into Raw yesterday. You know, um, but anyways, this could be one reason why. Big Show versus Titus O'Neil. This was a freaking fight over a Jetsons movie. New Day doing their, you know, funny, comedic, New Day host, you know, type of shenanigans for WrestleMania, right? I said shenanigans. Who the fuck says that? What the hell? They, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're segments. And you had Big Show come in there, and I don't know what the hell he was talking about. And then you had freaking Titus O'Neil come there and say, uh, bring some light into these guys. Like, hey, guys, somebody's getting fired tonight. Somebody's getting fired tonight. And I'll get to that as well. Mick Foley has to fire somebody tonight because Vince, because uh, uh, Stephanie McMahon said so. And you guys are here playing with fucking uh, the Jetsons, you know, uh, the movie. And then he pushes Big Show and Big Show gets pissed. And then uh, there's your match. So it was a D, obviously. Uh, you know, the fight over uh, Titus O'Neil's Jetsons jealousy is one of the weirdest catalysts for a match you'll ever see. Oh, no, there's way worse ones than these. Way worse ones. And quite coincidentally, we've seen a lot of those worse ones in the past year. Um, it felt forced. Hey, come on. Something like this is going to feel forced. I mean, not as forced as um, the other segment I was talking about, the fucking women's segment this past, you know, just just, just uh, earlier in the night. But it was a commercial trying to act as a storyline foundation. It was a fucking uh, retarded way of doing about it. Um, I thought it was sort of funny, I guess. But it was, uh, I mean, you can't expect anything more because the New Day are hosts. They're not even in a feud, right? So I'm not going to expect anything higher from WWE. And, and that's, not, that not, that's not as an insult, um, you know, but it's, it's reality. I mean, who is New Day going to face? Nobody. You know, they're just going to be doing uh, what they do best, and that's comedy roles up, to, up until WrestleMania. Hopefully until the Hardy Boys, you know, make their return. Whatever. Um, Big Show's recent dominance made sense when it looked like he was headed for a WrestleMania battle. Uh, apparently, you know, the crowd is amazing, man. Detroit, you know, in the past few weeks, crowd's been great. Uh, they kept chanting for Big Show to chokeslam O'Neal over and over again, just fucking with him, which is great. Um, so, you know, they were just uh, fucking with Big Show. And then again, he chokeslammed Titus O'Neal three times and walked out. Pinned him, one, two, three, walked out. Uh, so if, you know, WrestleMania battle with Shaquille O'Neal, if that's not on the table, there's not really a need to remind us about that he's a clubbing giant. Why not give Strowman that spot instead? Um, possibly Strowman and Big Show, you know, you know how, how you put that on the kickoff, you know? Um, I don't think they're going to do Strowman and Big Show. I don't even think they're going to do Strowman, um, in a one-on-one -on -one match. If anything, Strowman and Big Show, these guys, they're building up huge guys to be in the Honor of the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. For the same reason they had Goldberg win the Universal title. To give it some meaning that it needs. To have the Giants wrestle in the under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And if it's not... If it's... If it's not Hulk Hogan who's winning it. It's going to be uh, Braun Strowman. Anyways, that was not really anything important. Then you had another women's match here. So number two. Uh, Bailey versus Nia Jax. So... How did this come about? Well, it was simply just because... Um, Nia Jax pretty much said, how am I not part of the uh, women, uh, you know, the women's match at WrestleMania? How am I not part of that match? How, how did how did Sasha Banks get in that match when I beat the crap out of her? And she just, you know, uh, a quick roll up, one, two, three, you know, how does that, how does that work, right? So then Stephanie McMahon was like, uh, okay, so we'll put you in a match against Bailey and see if you win or not. 
So here, Bailey wins via disqualification. Um, and it was a rated a B. Um, so Raw managed to, you know, create some intrigue around the women's title picture, which seems settled next week. Um, and, you know, with Nia Jax being dominant, it was a great way of portraying her again. You know, she's pissed off, right? Um, and she wants a title match. You know, um, it's not clear that what WWE has in mind for Nia Jax at WrestleMania, but most likely, what you know, with her performance last night on Raw, it almost seems certain that she's going to be inserted into the women's championship match at WrestleMania. You know, via Stephanie McMahon, um, or, you know, just the announcer saying that, you know, Per management, uh, Nia Jax is now included. It's a fatal four-way for the WWE, ti uh, WWE title. For the WWE Women's title, um, whatever the case is. Because you can't tell me if you dedicated some time to Jax last week or last night to have her demolish Bailey that you're not going to... First of all, Bailey is looking horrible. What the hell? She tapped to Sasha Banks. She got beaten by... Well, she got her ass kicked by Nia Jax. She got beaten by... Uh, was it Charlotte or she beat Charlotte? I don't remember how it happened, but Bailey's been looking weak as a champion, and she's not looking good at all. Um, so that's another thing there. But at least they're doing some good with it, having Nia Jax look dominant. Um, I hope that they're, you know, finally away from the idea of, you know, putting jobbers against her and having her, uh, you know, face these, these, uh, these guys that, you know, aren't even, you know, part of the WWE, you know. Because it makes no sense. Hopefully they're away from that gig. And they can have Nia Jax be dominant. And possibly next year WrestleMania. We could see her as a champion. Um, because I think she could. She could. Her work has been coming along great. I think she could potentially be in line for a championship match down the road. One on one. Maybe. You know. As soon as SummerSlam. You know. If she can work really hard throughout the uh, spring months. And maybe even the summer. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a good gig. Um. But a good thing for her is that there's not a lot of women on the roster, so she can easily be catapulted into main event status. Um, so it's a good thing, you know, that she's been uh, portrayed a little bit better than other women on the roster. Um, at least more consistent than Braun Strowman in terms of the Giants on Raw. Um, you know, but it, it, it is sure that she has a robust supply of momentum heading into the big event. She devoured Bailey here, a bear battling or bear batting around a rabbit. Uh, Sasha Banks hinted hints at uh, a coming heel turn, a slow burning shift that will be a thrill to watch. Again, what I would do is do the same thing you're certainly doing with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is already a heel by nature. You know, Sasha Banks doing the same thing, and they both culminated WrestleMania will certainly make for a great WrestleMania, right? Um, there are a lot of things you don't do before WrestleMania. There's a lot of things you do during WrestleMania to make it a good show. If you have everybody turn heel before WrestleMania, it doesn't give WrestleMania the the star, well, the not the star power, but the feeling of anything can happen, right? It'll create more of that meaning if you don't spoil or do everything before the main event or before the grandest, grandest stage of them all. Right, so we'll see about Sasha Banks. Her slow shift burn is great. Again, these little elements that WWE's picking upon is great and what they're doing with it. Now, number two, there were two segments on the show that I really like. This was number two. Mick Foley's difficult choice. Who did he choose to fire? When I first heard this, I was like, wait a minute, you can't do that. I tweeted that out. How the fuck was Mick Foley supposed to fire this person? Mick Foley decided to fire Stephanie McMahon. You can't do that. And that's 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 almost you know, um, you know, logic right there. You can't do that. Obviously, she's higher above you. And then he was like, "Well, you know what? You are a burden. You are somebody who hates everybody. So you should leave." And then Stephanie McMahon was like, "You just want to know how bad I can get." And then all you see, Triple H comes out. And again, the mixture of storylines in WWE where it makes sense makes for intriguing progress to WrestleMania. That's how you do work and and and. SmackDown's been doing that, and Raw sort of capitalized on that a little bit last night, which is great. Mixing in storylines, you know. Braun Strowman, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, great. Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, Seth Rollins, who was there last night. Um, I'll get to that as well. But in terms of this segment, it was rated an A. So this was the highest rated segment, and it closed out the show. A lot of people tweeting, man, is that that was sort of like an Attitude Era-esque segment to close the show. Certainly a great segment, certainly great selling done by Seth Rollins. 
much of the scene focused on the authority figures, but in the end, this was about Rollins and Triple H. Um, the former got to play both the you know, uh, cavalry and the victim, creating a number of emotions for the audience. The moment offered quite the surprise as WWE had been so uh, secretive about Rollins' health to this point. He came out there, and I thought I knew what he was going to do, and it was what I predicted. Put his crutch in the air, dropped it, and ran right into the ring. Um, and he was running like he was perfect to let us know Rollins is ready for WrestleMania. And then they broke our dreams and our hopes with Triple H uh, smashing the freaking uh, crutch on the side of Rollins' leg, and that hurt, man. The, the, the crutch bent. Seth Rollins has sold it amazingly. Um, put him in the figure four lock, leg lock, and, uh, you know, and Rollins was tapping. Well, I don't think he was tapping, but he was, you know, gasping for somebody to help him, gasping to get the hell out of there. And uh, it was a great way to end off the segment. Triple H looking dominant over Seth Rollins. And Triple H again coming out, probably going to come out next week in the Barclays Center with huge humongous of booze. And he's probably going to say that, you know, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. Seth Rollins is not going to be at WrestleMania. You know, and I made sure of that even more last week. Right. Um, the closing scene reminded us about how vile Triple H is. He will flourish in this feud as his impassioned dialogue on Monday Night Previewed. Uh, Rollins is going to benefit in a big way from battling him at, all the way to WrestleMania. He's going to be, he's literally the big one of the biggest faces on 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 Raw, and that's because of being in this huge storyline. You know, this is where Rollins belongs. You know, he's uh he thrives in these different things, and this is how you book a specific. This is how you book faces, because a lot of people think that booking a baby face over a heel is difficult, but there are certain ways of doing about it. And number one is to have the heel be so diabolical, like Triple H, so the heel, you know like Triple H who's that diabolical that you want the face to kick his ass, right? That's where step one occurs. And so if you don't have a promising heel, well, then nobody really cares about, you know, whoever is going to be facing that you know, that person. Um, but, you know, Mick Foley coming out, man, man, that segment, again, it was done well. The this, this, this sequence of segments along with the Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns and Shawn Michaels and Undertaker gimmick, the segment, that, you know, that passed, you know, earlier that night was great. Um, you had Mick Foley and Stephanie. First, Mick Foley saying, Stephanie, you should be fired. Triple H comes out. Triple H said, get out of my ring. You're, you know, I could just end you right now. It was, it was, uh, the, the anticipation for Triple H was there. And it, it, I, I almost felt uh, like, shit, Mick Foley, you're going to get it, man. And uh, Mick Foley was like, okay, I'm going to leave. He walks out of there, puts on Socko, the man of a claw. The man of a... I, I thought they weren't even going to say man of a claw. I thought they were too PG that they would just say Socko, Mr. Socko. But they put man of a claw and they said, Michael Cole said, oh, man of a claw onto Triple H. They put... Man, that was a refreshing scene to see Mick Foley back there. And uh, the crowd was chanting Foley, man. Foley. You know, they were chanting, you know. The Attitude Era felt like the Attitude Era, man. And uh, the chance for Foley, it certainly felt uh, like, you know, we had a legend back. Certainly felt like, you know, Mick Foley was there to wrestle. And he beat the crap out of Triple H. And uh, put a man of a claw on him. But then ultimately, Stephanie with a low blow. Piece of shit. And then uh, fucking, uh, there you go. Mick Foley was about to get attacked the shit out of by Triple H. Seth Rollins, music hits, walks out there. Drops his crutch, goes to, you know, Triple H. Freaking running off ropes and shit. People thought he was going to do a curb stomp. Then gets ultimately uh, destroyed. By Triple H with the crutch. And it gets smashed with the crutch into the figure four. The crutch shots were diabolical, you know. Um, and it was a great way of segments, you know, mixing in this thing. And you know, next week it'll be very interesting to see. Is Mick Foley, how is Mick Foley going to appear on Raw? You know, what is Stephanie going to do, right? And uh, I guess the Triple H and Seth Rollins think Triple H will most likely be there next week. But it'll be very interesting to see what happens with Mick Foley. Um, because it, this almost certifies that if Mick Foley tried to fire Stephanie McMahon, well, Stephanie McMahon is not going to fire McFoley. And we can see that leading up to WrestleMania, which could lead for a new general manager. And there you go. That's how they ended off Raw. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is your Raw review for today. I had other news that I wanted to talk about where we're already an hour into this. So I will save that for another time. I thank you for listening into this one hour long review of Monday Night Raw. Raw, if I'm going to rate it... Last week, I think I rated it like a, a 6.5, some shit like that. I'm going to rate this week a 6 out of 10. And, and that was because of the two major segments that I enjoyed. A lot of the other things were sort of okay. But 6 out of 10, it was a decent show. 
And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the near future. SmackDown is live tonight. Man, SmackDown's going to be absolutely freaking amazing. AJ Styles and Shane McMahon, I can't wait to see what happens there. You got Cena and Nikki Bella, Miz Maurice. Miz Maurice talking shit on Talking Smack. And you also have uh, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. What the hell is Bray Wyatt going to do now with Randy Orton? Ladies and gentlemen, we are literally... After this week, we got two weeks left in this WrestleMania. Less than tw 19 days, actually. 20 days from yesterday, 19 from today, Tuesday, March the 14th, 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, your raw review for March the 13th, 2017. WrestleMania season is running along great. And we will see you guys for the SmackDown review tomorrow. Peace out, guys.